Hello everyone, this is Press Any Button and we are back in Unity again. Today is going to be a pretty short part, but it's just going to be in preparation for what we'll be doing in the next part, which is tying animations to movement. And so I wanted to get animations out of the way because it can be quite a big topic and it can take up a lot of our time. I didn't want to jump back and forth doing animations. I'll probably skip that part in the next part, but show what we'll actually be doing for that part here. So how do we create an animation? Well, I'm going to click on my character here and we can see that it's still the same character. They don't do anything whatsoever. And I'm going to have the animation window open here. So what you can do is you can go to window animation if you don't have it and you can just drag it along. See how these tabs just drag around and things like that. You can do that with your animation tab. And then whilst I have my character selected, I'm going to then hit create. And then that'll open us up. So I'm going to call my animation idle. And so here we have a space for us to put our idle animation. What are we going to need? Well, we're going to need the frames of our animation. So I'm going to go to my character here. And you remember I talked about slicing up our character. Well, I've done that. So we've gone to multiple and then we went to the sprite editor and we went to automatic. I'll actually talk about sprite sheets in a little part later. So we'll probably hit my Photoshop-esque application and I'll make a sprite sheet the proper way for once. But, you know, we slice all of these up and then we hit apply, we leave that. And so I, I didn't really need to do any work there. But now I have this animation and it's idle right here. We can see it. And what I'm gonna do with that animation is I'm just gonna drag in the frames of animation. So this is the first frame. This is the second frame, this is the third frame, and this is the fourth frame. And so I just kind of like disperse them randomly. I tried to put them on the tabs there. And we can actually have a preview of our animation by hitting this play button in the animation window. Now I'm going to switch the sample size down a little bit because I've heard it has been recommended to have 24 as your sample size. And so I'm just going to line these up with these little bold lines here. And then I'm going to run that animation again. Pretty much runs the same. One thing you'll notice is that our final frame of animation actually just flashes for like less than a second. You really can't see it. And I didn't make that frame of animation so that we wouldn't see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little box here that, and it should be highlighted blue. That will indicate that we have selected it. I'm going to hit control C and then I'm going to draw this line to where I want it and hit control V and that will just paste the node, I guess, or the frame or whatever. And so here we can actually see our last frame of animation for a little bit. It's just the really tall one. And now we have a good preview. If I run it, the actual game, we'll see that everything that we've done hasn't been lost. And so here we have our character there being animated on the spot. And so now I'm going to take you to the animator. The animator isn't something that we worked with too much last time. So to open it up, what you can do is go to window and then animator, but I already have mine open. So your animator should look a little like this. So right here, it has my idle animation set as the default animation. So upon entry, our idle animation is going to play. And that's exactly what we saw. We can do this with a ton of different animations. We can actually set what's called parameters for our animation. And you can see I've gone ahead and put in some parameters that we'll actually talk about in the next part. But things like speed, you know, floats, 
integers, bulls, triggers, all of these things we can set as parameters and we can also set the conditions for our transitions. Now a transition is made just like this. So I click on the animation here, I right click and then I make transition and I draw an arrow wherever I want to. This won't really let me draw an arrow to any state but you can see it draws an arrow to entry and things like that and then it'll if I click on it again, it won't work with this, but if I click on it again in the inspector, I'll be able to see a place where I can set the conditions for that animation to play out. And this is because we're gonna have multiple animations running for our player. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to actually make an animation. I'm gonna see how quick I can make this next animation. So I'm gonna call this run, save it in this folder, save. Great, I'm going to set the sample size to 24. I'm going to open this up. I already sliced my things up, so maybe I'm cheating, maybe I'm not. Um, just drag these over here. Okay, yep, resting on the nodes. I know that I'm not going to see that final frame, but I really want to, so I'm going to hit Control C and then control V, if it'll listen to me. There we go. And there we have it. And now because I've selected this animation or I've just been working on it, I can preview it from here without having to start the game, which is really helpful for me because my computer is an absolute potato. And we see that our running animation is playing out. And then if we go to the animator, we can see that our running animation is right there. So this is really useful and we're going to explore how that can be useful for us in the next part. The next part will come out probably really soon. I'll record it pretty much right after this part. So don't hold your breath, it's coming soon. Thank you, as always, this has just been like a little demonstration so that we can smoothly transition into our next part because it's gonna be packed with a lot of things, but we are gonna tie our animations to what we'll actually be doing as the player. So if I'm gonna run, I wanna run animation. If I'm gonna jump, I wanna jump animation. And I know jump's a popular thing, so we're gonna work on those things in the next part. But thank you for sticking around. I will be back very soon. Please let me know how this part went in the comment section below. If you have any questions or queries, also leave them there. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to continue learning over here, you can subscribe and things like that. But anyway, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.